Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of, where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. X-Men, 97, episode 7, Bright Eyes. I keep thinking of that Mr. Brightside song. Even though it's not Bright Eyes, but it's like you hearing, because oh, I miss the Bright Eyes. I think there is a Bright Eyes. Isn't there a Bright Eyes There's song? There's got to be. Mm. Guys, comment below. Is there a Bright Eyes song? <laughs> They're going to be like, yeah, morons. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are coming up to the finale of season one of X-Men 97. Three-part finale. We finally got the aftermath, or our X-Men dealing with mm. Genosha, episode five. The dark, dark episode that we have to talk about. But we'll try to make it fun. Well, you know, we're, we're really trying to make these episodes fun and they're just not fun yeah. <laughs> because they're very sad. Only when Morph is involved is it fun. Thank, thank whoever for Morph. <laughs> All right. So before we get into everything, make sure you're subscribing, following, throwing some stars away like Rogue throws Captain America's shield into the mountains. Um, all of that great stuff. Patreon, Discord. Hey, hello. And that's really it. So, spoiler warning. Mm-hmm. X-Men 97 spoilers for the whole season and beyond. So many spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let us officially take a bite of X-Men 97, Episode 7, Bright Eyes. Written by Charlie Feldman and B.J.B. Ballard and directed by Emmy Yonamura. Grief takes on many forms as the X-Men are left cleaning up the wreckage of the Sentinel attack on Genosha. Instead of attending Gambit's funeral... Rogue flies around the world using her brute force to get some answers. With absolutely no help from Captain America, she discovers an organization called OZT. Meeting the rest of the X-Men in Madripoor, they uncover a plot to create an even more powerful mutant eliminating machine. The Purple People Eater plays ominously in the background. (laughs) Yeah, that was a great touch. That needle drop, terrifying. Oh my gosh. That song... Is always supposed to be fun, but when put into this context, it is not fun at all. Whenever there's people literally getting smothered to the tune of Purple Eater, not good. Yeah. Or yeah. someone being held captive. Or getting against against shaved. Will, <laughs> getting shaved with that in the background. Again, not great. All right. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We were like, we went to the end. end. <laughs> we're done. So, like I said up top, this is, we get to see how our um, crew is going to deal with the aftermath of Genosha. So we open with Gambit's funeral. In case we haven't recovered already, they're reminding us that, you know, good old Gambit with that great glamour shot photo for his funeral. (laughs) I want to know where that photo was taken, first off. Like, did they have to take, in case you die, do do a photo? Like, I I think it's for the X-Men yearbook that comes out every year and they get a professional photographer to come in. It might be Dazzler for all we know. It's the same like 10 mutants every time. Right. (laughs) Totally. Or or maybe they just had a glamour day. Yeah. Maybe they're they're They know the Internet is coming upon them. So they wanted to get their headshots ready to go. This funeral was beautiful, uh, mostly because Nightcrawler did the eulogy in priest garb. This is this is why I love him, though, (laughs) not for the priest garb, but because like, this is the additional thing he contributes to the team, the spiritual aspect, the, mm. the bringing them together and helping them deal with stuff. It was fun, kind of, because there was a lot of, like, card game puns in this. Yes. <laughs> with a full house and a hand of card sharks, <laughs> you will bet everything on Gambit's life, who will never be bluffing yeah. in the afterlife or whatever. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's like a Cliff Notes version. <laughs> Um, of note, I did want to point this out in case people were wondering who the hell the other people were. So those are the Thieves Guild. They're mm-hmm. people that Gambit went with uh, prior to that. There was Pierre Belladonna, who's his ex fiance and his brother Bobby. There was a woman that had white and black hair. She was giving rogue vibes for sure. Well, I want to say it's Aurora. It would be kind of odd that she was there. Aurora is the twin sister to North Star. Mm-hmm. Uh, North Star is... The like queer icon of the X Men. He's the one that was had the wedding. Interesting that she was there. I, I maybe they crossed paths in Genosha at one point. I can't really remember, but I thought it was interesting. If that is her, if it's not, I have no idea who that. Yeah, that is. you know what's so fun about this? You know, X Men ninety seven in general is that they keep kind of plopping these people, these mutants, these characters into different scenes without 
mentioning who they are at all. You have to watch the series. (laughs) Right, exactly. Like, that's even like, and I don't know his name, but when when they go to Genosha, there's that big guy who's telling them to buff up because there's going to be a war. Mm -hmm. Get the little white hair. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I've seen that guy. I know that guy. But they don't mention his name. They don't say anything. And that's like the people at these funeral. They're just kind of like, we're going to put them there. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. I mean, th- that's kind of the fun thing. Though. Exactly. There, there's so many X-Men and there's so many characters that intertwine with the X-Men that, I mean, they could have their own encyclopedia, which they kind of do mm. <laughs> at this point. Um, but it is fun seeing some of these characters, especially at a funeral. It's like, who is going to show up at this? And, you know, his ex and brother and friend showed up. So that's nice. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> the one person who's not there is Rogue, yeah. which Jubilee has a problem with. Yeah. How do you feel about this episode going into the final three part or finale, like up to this point? I think it's I think it does the job of setting that up. Right. I don't know if, you know, especially compared to the last two episodes, you know, the one before it's like, oh, my gosh, Storm gets her powers back. Xavier is still alive. The one before that is the entire Genosha episode, which was insane. This is very much like a cleaning up that portion to set it up for the next three episodes. So I think it does its job of what it needs to do of showing how they're dealing with the aftermath of all that, but then letting us know that something bigger is going to be coming. Yeah, I like that they didn't pull away from dealing with this. Um, This is something that I think we needed to see, right? Because I think it would be easy for them to just sweep it under the rug like they do that in shows sometimes where it's like a lot of people die, but they focus on like one character. Mm. So I liked that in this, we got to go back to Genosha. We got to see our X-Men dealing with that. Um, I think it's needed to make it more of an impact and make us sad. But I liked how Rogue dealt with it, right? Because in this episode, I feel like we see a bunch of different variations of grief. And Rogue went on revenge slash retaliation slash trying to just find out who did this. <laughs> yeah, she is on a mission for intel. And really, we're we're watching Rogue kind of come to her end, in a sense, of trying so hard to keep the peace and be the good. And she's had it at this point, right? It, it, you know, <laughs> as she is reminded <laughs> by Nightcrawler, she's lost two people. In this incident, not just Gambit. That scene, not to skip the rampage, but when she's finally like gone as far as she can go and she's not really getting anywhere or, you know, there's more questions than answers and Nightcrawler shows up and it was such a beautiful moment to see her team slash family be there for her. But when night, when she was like, I lost Gambit, I don't know what to do. And Kurt's like, well, you lost two people. Do like, not forget, yeah. not only did you lose Gambit, but you lost. <laughs> Whoops. So keep crying. <laughs> there are the tears. I've like, been waiting for them. I get like what he was trying to say, but it did come off like, damn. Yeah. Okay. Way to, way to slap a girl while she's down. <laughs> Night girl. Her um, rampage, though, across the country and enter, you know, countries. The world. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I loved seeing her kind of have like, Another moment of hers where she's just trying to get answers and does not care who's in her way. Yeah. So cool. We really see her power in this too, right? So I think her first stop is General Ross. And they're like, no one can get in here. This is built to withstand the force of a million sentinels or whatever. And she's like, the Hulk. Bam, 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 bam. (laughs) Hi, guys. What the hell's going on? She also says when she meets him, what one of the lines she says in this um, that I really like is he's like, I thought your kind was the good guys. And she's like, you killed those. Now you have to deal with me. I'm like, dang. (laughs) She is scary. She's scary when she needs to be. Um, Do I think she's going about it the right way? No. Do I understand? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, well, you know what? I feel like in Rogue's defense. So we see Cyclops and Jean talking to the president, right? And they're like, you have to help us. We need more aid for Genosha. You have to get out there. And the president's like, well... The voters probably wouldn't like that, so we can't. It's all about optics. Right. It's all about optics. It's all about who are we actually helping really ourselves, right? We just want to win again, whatever it is. So Cyclops has tried the diplomatic route. (laughs) So Rogue has gone rogue. Right. And I think that that's the only way to get answers and to get help. Yeah. This episode does a interesting look at what happens to a people during like a mass tragedy right Mm -hmm. 
Um, and like, what does that look like? And we've seen this in the real world where it's like, we can't really help them because X, Y, and Z will look bad if we do this or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of times in this episode with Scott and Jean talking to the president, with Rogue talking to Captain America, with Beast talking to Trish. And with- it's put into perspective of this shouldn't have happened in the first place. And right. now you're too scared to help. Right. And, and kind of related to that, I think they did a good mirroring here is when Roberto has that coming out scene to his mother, right? It's very much a queer coming out scene, only that he's a mutant. And, and she's, she does the, we've known all along. But then at the end of it, she says, well, but we have to figure out how to kind of cover this up because we don't, we don't want our stakeholders to know because they won't like it. You know, yeah. It, that, that was tough to watch. And I'm sure it's tough to watch for people in any type of circumstance where it's, you know, sexual orientation or race or anything like that. And it's like, I knew that was coming, but then to hear it mm. and then for her to just be very flippant about it and like, who wants spritzers? Spritzers? I was like, oh, yeah, damn. At least he told her, you know, right. and at this point, it's up to her to decide. But I really, it's going to suck, right? I'd like, I hope he doesn't feel like he has to hide himself mm. and i'm glad that jubilee of all people is there by his side because she's going to be there to light the way oh beautiful <laughs> you know and i think about jubilee in that scene who is really feeling so proud of him for doing this for finally coming out for finally talking to his mom about it but then she must be taken aback by the mother saying well okay that's great but now we need to cover it up we, we need to be discreet about it right she i could just feel her being like Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. She's like, that's not how I thought it was no. going to go. And so, again, I think that this scene really does mirror the conversation with the president in the sense that, well, we want to do the right thing, but we can't because others, you know, won't be happy. Right. So it's like, okay, so we'd rather hide things. We'd rather not take care of people just so other people are happy. So instead of doing the right thing, it's just doing what's good for you. Right. And I, I kept trying to figure out like what, the episode title meant because mm. bright eyes is like, you know, you have bright eyes to something like the, your, um, what, how would you describe it's like, it? Like it's your, like bright eyed and bushy tailed, exactly. right? So it's like the world is new. Everything is okay. I'm so excited to go into this. And it's almost like the X-Men. Um, thank you for that. Cause I was like, I know what it means, but how do I say it? Mm. Bright eyes. <laughs> Cause um, I'm Mr. Bright eyes. I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> it's not that song, but, but I see that as, you know, the Scott making the decision to go to Genosha to show mutants and mankind that like there is still hope. And it's like the X-Men are supposed to be that. And having this in the same episode with Rogue completely going on a rampage is hard to deal with that. Right. And it's like if they find out that Rogue is doing this, how are people going to feel about Genosha? Mm. It's not going to look good. So wow. I do think that Cap should have tried harder to help. I understand his reservations of like, we need to do this by the book. We can't just go to Mexico and like destroy a bunch of stuff and kill somebody. You know, I understand his like hesitation, but her line of calling him a top cop, oh, America's top cop. So good. Yeah. And so true. Yeah. I love that line. I thought that it was so kind of to the point. It was really kind of digging it in there. In this moment where she's looking for help, she's, you know, if anyone should help her, it should be Captain America, right? And he just seems to be like, well, my hands are tied because he does seem to be the type of person that wants to play by the rules or do what's best and take the right steps to getting there. And so she wants to kind of blow past all that and just get to the answer. Yeah, I mean, I think I understand it, but, you know, with her saying like, well, you're with us, right? And he's like, well, my hands are tied. And she's like, oh, well, then you don't need the shield. Goodbye. Yes, <laughs> that was incredible. I, I like her like, well, here's the hole we made and I'm going to throw it. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> and and so I just keep picturing him like, I'm like, that, that must have taken him a long time to find. It must have, unless he has a tracking device. But what I, what I want to like point out with the shield is when he, when she gets it, Like what went through his head at that moment of like, oh, usually the shield comes back. Like, how do I usually they usually don't have it. Yeah. She was like (laughs) very much holding it for ransom the entire time. She was like, "Mm, mm, mm, would you look mm, good? I was going to say, I know. I mean, come on, (laughs) let's get it going. Yeah. I I liked his cameo and it makes sense. Right. It's like with how big of a scale Genosha was, it makes sense that 
Captain America or somebody from outside of the X-Men is involved or does show up. Mm. Um, now will the Avengers or other groups show up in the end? I guess that's up to see, but it would make sense if they do. Like other people have to be with the X-Men. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting thing, right? Because the X-Men is made up of mutants. The Avengers are made up of everybody like skilled heroes and some aliens and a god you and know? mutants and mutants right so it's like why aren't they there more helping them because it's captain america <laughs> captain america <laughs> um i do want to talk about genosha for a little bit because there's quite a few things that happen in there the beast and trish conversation i liked it a lot and i like seeing beast in another light or kind of being angry and not as nice and warm as mm. he usually is um quoting mr rogers and martin luther king in the same scene, um, kind of love a man that knows a quote right off the top of his head. He's very learned. Yeah, he's I can very well read. I can hardly remember some lines from this. And he's just like, Meh. got it. Yeah, I just made up my own, as you saw before. <laughs> I said like a million sentinels and you were like the Hulk. I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that is exactly what they said. But I mean, those words like so it's it is tough reading the comics and watching this stuff and putting it up on this bigger kind of fictional scale, but also realizing like this is real stuff mm, like right the whole concept of like maybe our first mistake was begging for tolerance like what is tolerance here mm -hmm. like is tolerance just being like okay you can live there you can be there but like we're not going to help you you're not going to get the same rights you're not going to get the same resources as us we acknowledge you exist but we're not going to have you at the table or even consider what right you need it's very much like well isn't that enough aren't you going to be happy with that and I feel like he's in this conversation here that it's also talking about the media. Right. And so he's like, oh, so interesting that you're here to help when just a day or two ago you were doing an, a report and reporting from outside of our mansion and making, you know what I mean? And like making sort of you were dramatizing it for what ratings, right. right? What were you really showing? And are you really going to help? What made the best TV? Right. Calling out Scott's dirty laundry. Right. And secret child with the clone of his wife. <laughs> Listen, south from the future <laughs> listen it's just the truth it's not necessarily dirty laundry it just is um we need to talk about scott and gene in this particular situation when they go to the the citadel i think they called it i liked this scene because it seems like gene and scott are finally being able to work through some things um and talking about it and being more of a team now instead of just not talking and doing psychic affairs with uh, clones when she hears like hears feels a telepath and him saying madeline and it's not is kind of sad so one of the interesting things is, is that when we were watching this gene's hair was down i said oh it's madeline but it wasn't it was gene and so and i'm like oh is she trying to make moves to try not make moves but like be more like madeline I mean, maybe it's just you can't have your hair in a ponytail because it will break. I mean, that's literally how they draw her. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> and now all of a sudden her hair is down. I'm just saying we made it. Everybody made such a big stink about the switch <laughs> in the opening yeah. you know, credits. I was like, well, we're trying to do something here. But maybe uh, it's her just being like, are you more comfortable now? Like, I have my hair down like her. <laughs> Can we have our psychic rapport? <laughs> Let's rapport this, baby. Let's repair the rapport. Imagine rapport. Um, I you know, did really feel that scene when she kind of walks into the wreckage and she can feel all the lives that have been lost. And they keep showing that fish guy who... Fish guy? Yeah, there was that guy in the Genosha episode where he's like traveling through water. He pops up out of the water and then he's like in his tuxedo and he's like dry. Oh, right. And then the, and it's like, oh, look at that cool fish guy. And then they show him dying and then they show him again crushed. Yeah. This poor fish guy. They also showed Dazzler getting crushed and Sebastian Shaw and Emma. But that fish guy, who is he? Who are they? Ask Excuse the listeners because they'll they'll tell us. Who is that fish guy? <laughs> I feel so badly for him. Them. I don't I know mean, them. Also, though, just to like talk about her abilities, she's able to feel people's pasts and un, you know, done futures and everything after they died. It's it's almost like whatever emotion is imprinted. In that land, she can feel. Yeah. Sucks. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. Yeah. And rats, rats everywhere. 
Um, but we got Emma. Yeah. And like we said in the last episode, or maybe the episode before that, she got her diamond form, her second mutation. I love her so much. She still had perfect red lip. And then she said, I'm good under pressure. I've always done well under pressure. I'm like, <laughs> she said, I may be clinging on to life, but God damn it. Do I have time for a pun? <laughs> and we were like, slay. I like how she's like on the stretcher and she's like, wait, I got this great joke. Hold on. I've been waiting to say this for like two weeks. I've been thinking about this for a long time. She's like, but look at my lip. <laughs> I wonder if she's just under the rubble. She's like, well, I must look good. I'm very, I'm very curious about the red lip. I feel like when you see her in her diamond form, she's usually completely diamond, but not for this. At the ball, she had cover girls, matte <laughs> lips, stay on forever lip gloss, and it worked. <laughs> it's as strong as diamond. Oh my God. A- <laughs> she said, shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> she should have sang that when she came out. If they could afford Purple People Eater, I'm sure Diamond by Rihanna would have been a lot more expensive, but we could have gotten at least a little beat. Imagine her just getting floated yeah. and singing it. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm picturing in my head it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, so Genosha's oh, a wreck. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, we're we're trying to look we're trying to look for the diamond in the rough here, people. The bright eyes in the darkness. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Emma has her second mutation. Great, fantastic. I hope she's able to help at some point. Um, instead of just throwing quips and looking gorgeous as ever. But we'll see. She said, you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> so should we talk about Madripoor for a second? Yeah. So wait, what's what's interesting about this, though, is that while they're on Genosha, they get like a FaceTime from Trask. Yeah. And he's like, come to Madripoor. What, drink some Diet Coke. What or, I what I love about this is when they get to Madripoor, the UN consulate or whatever it is there. The secret entrance to the secret lab is in the lobby of the building where like anybody can just get a Diet Coke. No one <laughs> drinks diet in Madripoor, so they know that they'll be safe. I wonder if they do have a guard near it every time and like, you're not allowed to use it, which is also more suspicious. Maybe but I just want to know, like if like Trask goes there for work and he does it, the whole thing slides. Like nobody in the lobby is okay. It's not the best. I do. <laughs> it's not the best. Maybe there's just an out of order sign on it all the time. Also, he knocked everybody out. Why did not just meet him at the entrance? Just I don't know. Well, it's silly. even though I mean, like let's dig a little deeper. He calls them there. He tells them to come to his not so secret secret lair. They get there, and then he's jumping from the building. Yeah, that's how you treat your guests. Well, <laughs> you don't offer them anything. He gave all the information he po- he had, which was not much. Not much. He never said Bastion once. He just said, somebody else. That's all I have. Bye. <laughs> like, that's it. This guy. <laughs> um, but this has terrifying ramifications mm. for the X-Men, for the rest of the series going forward. Sinister, who has gotten technology from somewhere or help from somewhere, is building new Sentinels. That aren't only advanced, but can also be human sentinel hybrids. Right. Yeah. So this is an interesting scene here when we see our first one sort of come alive or, or I don't even know, go into activate, activate. Right. So, uh, so we've been talking kind of about rogues journey in this and the path that she's going on. And when he goes to jump, she grabs him. Ugh. She tries to get more information. He has no more information, so she lets him go. He says, I have nothing else to give. And she said, same, sugar. And drops him. Drops him. And, 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 right, and so this is kind of going back to what Beast was saying. Have we been trying too hard to be the good guys? Or are we going about it the wrong way? And we have Morph going, is this who we are now? And Wolverine saying... She just did what we all wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, it's going to split some people, right? I think as us as viewers, we're going to have to deal with our own emotions. It's not black and white. It's very gray. This is a very dramatic and dark episode. And dealing with grief in this way makes people do things that they believe is correct. I think Morph's line is very important here because he's like, I don't think this is like who we're supposed to be. Like, one, you denied the man his suicide and then you just killed him. It's like going a step further of like, you really need to like sort out your priorities here because like, I don't think this is how we're supposed to be doing things. Also, 
Nightcrawler's there. Gene is there. Anybody could have done it. Anybody <laughs> could have saved him. Could have saved him. <laughs> they were just like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> they were like, oh, man. <laughs> After he Not hit the ground. Trask. After he hit the ground. You know, I, you know, I, I'm sorry. I don't think she's in the wrong. Um, I don't think so. This is the person that created the things that have been murdering you and your friends for years. No, but I, I don't think she's wrong. But what does this mean? You know, like, are they just going to be able to kill people that they think their decisions are doing something wrong? You know, just because the X-Men are like powerful and have these abilities doesn't mean that they can go unchecked. And I think that's to a certain degree. He is bad. Mm -hmm. I don't think he should be able to do what he's doing. That's a case. But like, how far are they going to go? I think that's like the bigger conversation, right? And I think that's what Morph is trying to get at. It's like, mm. is this who we are now? Like, we're just going to kill people? That, yes. Like, <laughs> it is who we are now, Morph. No. <laughs> Change into whoever you want to be. This is who we are now. They're supposed to be about hope. <laughs> yeah. The hope of not having them kill you. <laughs> hey, look, I agree with her, right? I just, I'm just try trying to think of the bigger picture here. Because then look what he does. Yeah. He dies slash comes back alive and immediately, and like, you know, blasts that, her. That scene with Rogue with the lights of the sign and her talking about her man and then exterminate, not exterminate, terminate, what eliminate, it, eliminate. There we, I'm Neutralize. like, Doctor Who is in my head. <laughs> and then that punch completely taking out Rogue from the fight. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I also want to talk about, again, our little power couple who seem to be back at it. I love that Cyclops is like, Gene, you get the building. I'll get the debris. And they you jump know, out. Did you notice in that scene at when, one amazing i love in like action stuff when buildings are like they're in it and they're like trying to whatever it's so cool it's just like such an unimaginative way to do an action sequence i love how scott was like get the rubble blah 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 whatever she's like i'm gonna get the rubble get the building and you and you <laughs> and also i am going to dispose of the building in a way that doesn't hurt anybody else by throwing it into the ocean <laughs> Right? Not like Rogue just chucking vibranium through the sky. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to put it in the water so that no one else is hurt. Um, this is where we really see Prime Sentinels being who they are, right? Took down pretty much the whole team. We have Morph morphing into Quicksilver, which fantastic. I love these little cameos that Morph is giving us. And it actually shows that like he has the physical abilities of the people he morphs into. Mm. Um, very formidable person. Like if he's very powerful, depending on who he can replicate, right? Absolutely. Ugh. I also enjoyed, I didn't enjoy Morph getting hit, but I did the like Wolverine going, Morph. Yeah. Trying mm. to defend him. My lover. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's dig into that a little more. <laughs> there is, we haven't really gotten any scenes since the shower. The only one that I could be like, ooh, Morph and Logan are smooching a little bit is when they come to comfort Rogue and it looks at the stairs and Morph is like behind Logan with his arm back there. And I'm like, they're still very close. Oh, yeah. And Logan <laughs> had those sleeves all the way up. He said, <laughs> As opposed to halfway down. He said, we got you, baby. <laughs> with these guns. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Digress. I digress. So, yeah, th the fight was awesome. Um, again, this show is continuing to have a track record of amazing action sequences. I love that Jean had her like TK speed. She was able to keep up with. Yeah, Trump's that was amazing. Prime Sentinel. So cool. And she did not faint. So, yay. Yeah. You know, and I think that the, there's something to be said about that. And just in general of seeing this very powerful female hero owning her powers, being awesome and not having to faint. Right. After, you know, that's a big pet peeve of mine in any media when there's a strong female and she manages to faint. After using her powers. So I loved seeing Jean really just kind of be badass in this entire episode. I'm still waiting for her to get her moment, right? It's like a lot of these characters have like their moment. She, I feel like, has not yet had hers. Mm. Like Madeline had great moments. And she kind of had a moment when she took everybody out of Madeline's, I guess, hallucination. Um, but I'm waiting for like that moment for her. She's still recovering, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm also waiting for the Logan moment, too. I feel like Wolverine hasn't really had a moment in this yet. That's fine with me. <laughs> I, I love Wolverine. I love Logan. But he has been like the only X-Men getting attention for like 20 years mm. in movies. 
give me everybody else. That's fair. You know, like he's fantastic, but like, I'm glad we got Gambit and Rogue. You know, they're having their moments. So, of course, Gambit's moment had to end with him dying, but it was amazing. The scarf. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that episode and this episode, I cannot rewatch because they're so heavy and they're yeah. so dark. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of dark. Speaking of dark. Shall we get to uh, Bastion and kind of what this is setting up to? Yeah. Any any thoughts before we get to well, this? Well, I, I also want to just point out that Cable shows up again. Yes. Saving his father. And Gene in this moment realizes that Cable all along was Nathan. Ugh. And so you have to wonder, Cable and Scott reuniting in this moment, now knowing who he is, you can see Nathan almost feeling like he doesn't have time for Scott. You know Time, the future. Uh, and so I think that that's an interesting relationship that I want to see where that goes. Yeah. And also to point out that um, we don't know where Madeline is either. We don't know where a few of them are. Madeline in particular, like we haven't seen her. Jean didn't see her die like she saw the other ones and she was right there. Where's the Goblin Queen? Yeah, well, <laughs> she's down in limbo probably. <gasps> I mean, she does. Hmm, interesting. We'll see. Um, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> and then she brings magic with her. Amazing. Yes. I was, I'm, I'm loving this. So yes, Cable does show up, which I feel like he's going to be the key to saving everybody. Um, now exactly how that's going to work. The cards still haven't been dealt. Mm. Is he going to be able to go back and save Gambit? Whatever. I don't know. I'm yeah. still not in the, I don't know how I feel about like the time travel stuff in that way of like just going back. And erasing everything that happened. You know what I mean? All this character growth and development and everything. But if he could have done it, why hasn't he already done it? So I'm curious to see what's happening in the future or behind the scenes with him. It feels very Terminator in a Mm. way to me. Like go back to the past to stop the one person from doing the thing. And we have humanoid sentinels. Hello. Oh my God, this is Terminator. Yeah, this is Terminator. With the (laughs) X-Men. Arnold Schwarzenegger is coming (laughs) for sure. Imagine if he voiced bastion (laughs) that would have been cool but yeah let's get to bastion (laughs) okay so bastion is terrifying Mm. um very very scary he essentially for people that may not know he i believe he appeared in 1996 so he kind of came about after onslaught and there was this whole story arc in the comics onslaught is pretty much the merge of xavier and magneto together so terrifying power combo and he kind of came after that in the Operation Zero Tolerance. And so he is a fusion of Master Mold and like a Sentinel Nimrod, Nimrod from yeah. the future. So terrifying. He can control Sentinels and also has all of like the durability skills, flight, durability, strength, all of that. So he's the one that's been pulling the strings mm-hmm. so far right. that we've seen. There could be more, but the fact that we have Nimrod who is a insane villain and also somebody that is a fusion of all of that. Scary. So just walk through something with me, right? So we have this villain who is made up of a bunch of different powerful beings, and he wants to create these sentinels to kill the X-Men. Mutants. Mutants, because mutants will be standing in his way of fully taking over. Is that, is that like, well, it's just it, there. So Operation Zero Tolerance is a bigoted group. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Like they just do not like this group of people. And that's like since he is part Sentinel and Nimrod in his mind, like he can never overcome that. Like my gotcha. whole thing is to destroy the mutants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's his whole goal. OK, that's it. Got it. So not necessarily like I want to take over the world, even though like in the comics, I do believe he has a position of power, like in the Pentagon. Like that's how he weasels his way through. Um, and this, he might also, I think, gone up in the ranks a little bit. We'll see. I have a theory about him and Forge. Like, I believe we see a photo with Forge in him. So mm. I feel like Forge's past is still going to catch up with him. But yeah, he just wants to kill mutants. That's it. All right. He's just a bigot. And so he's working with Mr. Sinister, who's a very talented engineer to create these new Sentinels. Yep. Got it. Human Sentinels. Yes. Prime Sentinels, as they're called, which, as we saw with Trask, is they're not easy to take down. No. And, and like Trask is a human. So when we see who he has in captivity, 
if he creates a sentinel out of that person, well, that's pretty. You can say the name. I mean, well, I wanted you to say it. Oh, I, I wanted you to <laughs> give the biggie. Thank you. Um. Uh. Yeah, Magneto's alive, and he's getting a nice clean shave by <laughs> Bastion, which is very scary, and I don't understand why. <laughs> Because he wants him to look good for his debut, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, I think I feel like the purple people eater is Magneto. What do you mean? Like the song is about a one eyed, one horn flying purple people eater and he's going to change Magneto into I that. hope not. Like that's going to that's probably what's going to happen. But like that sucks because it seems like right. That's what he did to Trask. And he's saying like, yeah, the one the prime sentinel that trask was was formidable but imagine someone who actually has power what that will be like i'm curious if so he knows xavier is alive Mm -hmm. and he knows that the x-men have been selling the world to lie why we don't know yet but he now knows so he has that card up his sleeve to be like they've been lying about this they said he's dead he's not so that's going to create a whole big issue and then if he does turn magneto into a sentinel of some type or can can just control him that's also going to be bad so it's almost like he is going to be able to destroy the X-Men with themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's terrifying. He's going to impl- he play on their internal drama. <laughs> well, I think, <laughs> Thank you. you know, personally, I think that they're going to tear each other apart. I think that I still don't think that the X-Men know that Xavier is alive. I think they do. I think that he's going to come back and they're going to be like, wait a minute, you were alive this entire time. Mm. And then... Maybe Bastion's they, gonna be like, oh, so you didn't know. Maybe they did know, but he wiped it from their memories or something. Oh, I don't okay, know. Okay, maybe. Like, I don't know. I just find it weird that they don't know that he's alive. And he if if Xavier left without them knowing, why wouldn't he be trying to get back? Like that doesn't make sense to me. Because he fell in love with the bird people. I don't think that that's not enough for Xavier because as soon as he knew they were in trouble, he wants to go back. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so then I guess what is the benefit of faking his death to the world? That's the point. I don't know. I guess we have to find out why. Where's Storm? <laughs> Any episode <laughs> without Storm in it is not a 10 out of 10. Agreed. Agreed. So. Hopefully she'll be back for this three-parter that's coming along with her powers and her great new outfit and everything. And, um, you know, we'll have to watch them get the snot beat out of them for two episodes. And hopefully they have some sort of victory in the third one. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. So Cable's going to be a big part. Where do we go from here? I mean, they don't even really know Bastion is the mastermind. No, behind we know that. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Lots to go. Okay, we're going to have lots to talk about with the finale, so uh, let us know what you thought of this episode. It was dark. It was great. Cameos. Terrifying smothering of people while one-eyed, one-horned flying people, people eater played. It's everything we love the X-Men for. <laughs> Needle drops and smothering. Hello, the drama. It's just the drama. Oh, all right. Till next week. Bye. Bye.